Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome back. It's day three of spoiler season, and today we have certainly got a juicy one, folks. I'm not going to be playing the video today because it's 16 minutes long. But I do recommend going to check it out if you haven't already. After you've watched this video, of course, I will be breaking down pretty much everything to do with the Echo bosses because we now have them. I'm going to keep this video relatively short, though, because I will have a huge area picking guide coming out. I'll be recording it as soon as I finish with this, and that will include all the the echo information as well in correspondence to how it affects your region picking choices and that sort of thing so i'm going to keep this mainly just about the bosses and the items they provide but i just wanted to mention this whole thing that is showing right now in the video this is an echo orb and in order to fight the new echo bosses this isn't anywhere in the blog post it's just in the video but to fight an echo boss you have to first get the orb and when you get the orb it's a single use unlocks the echo boss for the rest of league so you don't have to get one per time you want to fight it but you get this from a regular boss and it unlocks the echo version for the rest of the league basically for that region and some of the echo bosses have requirements basically whatever the requirements of the regular boss is is the requirements of the echo boss Okay, so enough talk about Echo Orbs. Once you've got your orbs, what are you going to face off against? Well, it depends on your regions. I'm going to go through them all one by one here. So we'll start off with Asgarnia. We have Echo Cerberus. Now, we don't know any details about the fights. We can only assume they're going to be more difficult in order to make up for these rewards and also to challenge you more given the fact that Leagues makes you overpowered as hell. We do know the items they drop though, so that's what I'm going to be talking about here. The Dog Sword is a Every God Sword combined. If you spec with this, you get all of these effects at once. You get to restore some hit points and prayer, mark them for sacrifice, which will restore some more hit points in a few seconds and deal another 25 damage to them, or 20, I can't remember. Freeze your target, reduce the stats, increase your damage and accuracy on the spec. If there's a way to make use of this with like some relic that allows you to spec more times, then it could be absolutely insane so definitely a very cool item to have you do need like 93 slayer or something for cerberus but once you have the echo orb from regular cerberus you don't need to be on a slayer task anymore to fight the echo version you can go and do that whenever you want and the same is true for any of the slayer bosses that are found here if you have the echo orb unlocked then you don't need a slayer task to fight the actual boss which is a nice little bonus here features stats which i'm guessing is just the same as pretty much every other god sword i've never used one outside of lms before <laughs> i don't like the god wars dungeon <laughs> but yeah that's cerberus fee definitely a cool one the dog sword definitely a cool one could go absolutely nuts with some sort of melee build. We've got the Drygore Blowpipe in the desert from the Calphite Queen. We did have this one teased already as a strong range weapon. And this is kind of like a blowpipe combined with an Osmonton's Fang. So it can have a two tick attack speed, like a toxic blowpipe. Very, very fast. And not only that, the toxic blowpipe is kind of inaccurate, right? It doesn't have that much accuracy. This one rolls accuracy twice, takes the highest result, and says, we'll have that one. Just like the fan does for stab melee. Very cool. Very cool to have. It means you don't need to take Tyranwin to get that sort of fast firing range weapon to take into tombs with you. You can just take the blowpipe in and... You'll be fine, you can have a, a crossbow as well, whatever type, you'll be pretty good to go, so definitely a cool one. In Mauritania, we have the Grotesque Guardians and the Gloves of the Damned. Now these count as an Amulet of the Damned, so you don't need to get yourself an Amulet of the Damned and keep it on. You can wear whatever Amulet you want or next slot when you're wearing your Barrow's gear and still have the extra set effect bonuses from the Amulet of the Damned. Not only that, they're all doubled. Yeah. And the stats of these gloves are around about the same as Barrow's gloves. It's going to be giving you a very, very solid good slot, considering the fact that Barrow's gloves are unobtainable in leagues, folks. Unless they change something with RFD this year. Like, these are going to be one of the best tribrid wrist slots. And given the fact that it also powers up all your Barrow sets, which you're obviously going to have in Mauritania, you could get some very, very exciting buffs from this. 
up to 60% extra damage from your yeah, Arims, I think. Some insane numbers with Darox. Carols can fire super fast. I'm sure there's lots of spicy stuff that could come of this. Guthans would just make you like invincible basically, right? Definitely a cool one to have. And again, once you've got your brittle key and killed enough to get the Echo Orb, however many that is, you can fight this off task. You don't need to get a gold task for it after that. Another case where that is true is the Thermonuclear Smoke Devil in Kandarin. Now, Kandarin's a mage region and that's not changing. We've got 6% magic strength bonus here on this offhand item with plus 20 accuracy. And casting spells against enemies with elemental weaknesses will double the weakness so you can get some ridiculous boosts to your elemental spells on the standard spell book here. Not only that, you get unlimited elemental runes when it's equipped. And given the fact that it's offhand, that's pretty nice. You could just use that and a lore rune to go anywhere, pretty much. So, you know, it's just going to save a lot of invent spaces for the, the mages, just teleporting and running around doing shit. As well as the fact that it's also a really, really nice offhand to uh, buff that playstyle, which Kandarin is already very focused in. Devil's Element is a nice one. I'm sure it'll see a lot of use. In Fremenic, we have the Dagonoff Kings, and there is two items available here. Two. I gotta be honest, I'm a bit confused about the Emperor Ring, because it is absolutely disgustingly good, and yeah, you just don't need the normal rings, right? Like, this is just better than all of the Desert Treasure 2 rings. So if you have it, you don't need to do any of those grinds. You've just got the best ring and the best amulet here as well. Like, the these are both insane. Like, this is making me want to go Fremenic, even though I, I didn't think Fremenic was great to pick alongside Valamore previously. Like, this is just nuts. There's not much to say. These are nuts. Just look at the stats. Two, two items slots that are notoriously hard to fill. Maybe not the next slots as much. You can get a glory and a fury, but you do need to get your crafting level up for that. The ring slot though, very hard to get stats in. And this is a region where you would usually get the ring slot, which is why I'm a bit confused that they put the ring here, but it's so fucking good. And having two items as well is, is definitely nice, but I'm guessing the Echo version won't let you lure them into safe spots. I'm guessing they're just going to, like, all attack you and always be on you when you're in there to, to make it, like, an actual fight. So these might be tough to get, but certainly worth the trouble. Into Ranwin, we have the Echo Hunluff. Now, this one is unlocked via the Corrupted Gauntlet, but when you go to fight him, you don't have to do preparation. I think you get like a, a either a tier 2 or a tier 3 setup with perfected weapons, and we don't know what invent yet, but it says a very reasonable... Like, you basically just get set up and sent straight into the fight with him, which is great. I don't know if that means you can get like normal loot as well, without having to do all the prep, because if it does, that could make farming the gauntlet very, 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 very quick. Like, if you just have to fight the Echo Hunluff every time, and you get normal gauntlet loot too, then that's epic. I'm not entirely sure how that'll work yet, but if that's the case, it will make farming those armor seeds and those enhanced weapon seeds much, much, much quicker. And you're gonna want them, because the Crystal Blessing, which is a five, a massive five prayer bonus in the ammo slot, gives accuracy and damage bonuses of crystal armor, which is plus 30% for a full set, to all melee weapons. Now, usually this is something you only see with the bow far and down. The buffer. Usually this is something you only see with the buffer, people wearing crystal. But with melee? This could be insane. An extra 30% accuracy and damage to all. And this is in your ammo slot. So it's not affecting the rest of your build at all. It's just on top of the rest of your build. Nuts. Nuts. Somewhere where you never usually get damage. Like, you can't get damage bonuses out of your ammo slot, right? <laughs> Unless you're playing ranged, I guess. That makes sense. But usually, your ammo slot is for arrows or a plus one prayer bonus. Not a plus five prayer bonus and a 30% accuracy and damage bonus. It does mean you have to wear the full crystal though, so it maybe doesn't pair as well with 
melee regions like Mauritania as I'd like it to because you'd probably want to be wearing the Barrow sets there rather than the Crystal, thanks to the Gloves of the Damned, but definitely a spicy one for these melee builds. I think pairing it with Valamore is a pretty sweet deal. And yeah, definitely excited to see what comes of this. It, it's making me consider Taranwen a lot more than I previously was because I am thinking of doing a melee build myself this year. I'm moving on to the Hespori in Corund. This one is a guaranteed drop of the Echo Orb from regular Hespori. So because it's a, I think it's because it's a sporadic boss, you have to wait to grow it usually. Which you still do for the regular version. You you have to plant it, wait a, like a day and a half, and then you fight it. But you will guaranteed get an Echo Orb from it now. And once you do, you can fight the Echo version at any time. You don't need to wait for it to grow or anything to get a chance at the Nature's Reprisal. And this is just like basically a nut salamander. So with a Teku salamander, we've got 77 slash. This one's stab instead, but it's better with 95. Does it not have any magic attack bonuses? I guess not, but 45 here and ranged is like almost double. Melee strength's higher, range strength is way, way, way higher. Is this one just like not a tribrid one or something? Thought it was, thought they were all tribrid. No magic, but okay, so th it's just way better than any of the Salamanders basically. How it compares to other weapons? Hard to tell. Okay, so it's got the same melee strength bonus as a fang and slightly lower accuracy. To be fair, for a tribrid weapon, having lower accuracy is because it has accuracy in all three styles. So basically, it's a very strong weapon. Another thing to keep in mind is that the melee attacks are actually ranged. Like, this thing fires projectiles regardless of which style you're using it on, which means that you can melee things from a distance, weirdly. Hit them with melee from a distance. Could be interesting. It does need to be charged with nature and earth runes. Not too bad at the cost. You usually have a lot of supplies for everything in leagues. But yeah, definitely an uh, interesting one to look out for if you want to try, like, some sort of hybrid tribrid build maybe you could just do like this with void knight armor and just switch your helmet and that'd be the only thing you switch your helmet and your combat st style <laughs> and just take that everywhere i don't know it could be a, a spicy build and then finally in valamore we have the big boy himself the soul parried it once again like the last region Although not for the same reasons. If you complete the full gauntlet and kill Soul Heredit, you're guaranteed to get the Echo Orb. And then you can fight the Echo Soul Heredit without having to do the waves before it. You just get to do the fight. And it's going to be really hard, obviously. But it will give you some insane rewards, potentially. The Sunlit Braces, I'll start on that bottom one. Very nice glove slot. Just give you some nice bonuses to both strength in melee and ranged and some decent attack and defense bonuses as well. Not only that, they increase all of your healing by 100%. Now originally I was looking at something, oh, that's not that good, right? Like what? Okay, you could use it with Guffins, maybe there's like a Soul Stealer Relic. Can't use it with a Regen Bracelet, you could use it with a Hit Points Cape. Sure, like toxic blowpipe specs, I'm thinking about all this sort of stuff. And then I realised, all healing, that counts food. You eat a shark, 40 hit points. Saradomin bruise, double. Everything, everything, everything is double. That's actually insane. That's so much burst healing and so much extra healing out of your supplies. I mean, it's, it's double. <laughs> but yeah, that can't be understood. It's literally double your healing from all sources. Crazy, definitely not to be underestimated. And the Sunlight Spear itself, a two-handed melee weapon that gains you Sunlight stacks up to a max of 20, and you can spend seven stacks to spec every NPC within three tiles when your damage is increased by 3% per prayer bonus, which is something that you will be sure to pick up a lot of in Valamore from the Colosseum with all the Sunlight Fanatic armor. So a big melee weapon, basically, a big slapper. Uh, definitely going to be a spicy one to see when it gets going and could even let you do tasks against things like Dust Devils, maybe, and burst them around you with the special attacks. 
And that's about all there is to say for the most part on these items. There's an awesome selection here of things to keep in consideration. And you can forgive the lack of my green screen for this bit. I completely forgot to do the King Black Dragon. So here I am like half an hour later while I was editing and realised that I forgot to do the Wilderness and King Black Dragon. I don't know how I just skipped over it. This guy can give you the Thunder Kopesh. It is a uh, melee weapon that attacks twice with its special and does bolts of lightning and all sorts of crazy shit. Its special effects deal full damage to the corporeal beast and have the 20% chance to trigger an AoE lightning all the time with 50% of the original attacks max it. Very nice melee weapon to have to maybe clear out some mobs in the nearby area as well. And it can be paired quite nicely with the Thousand Dragon Ward that we have here, an excellent offhand that gives you immunity to every status effect in the game. Poison, Venom, Dragonfire, Icy Brat, I'm not going to read them all out, you can read yourself. This is pretty good and it has a plus 12 melee strength bonus as well, so very reasonable offhand in comparison to like a Dragon Defender with some good defensive bonuses and offensive bonuses as well and a plus six prayer bonus to boot. Definitely nothing to sniff at. Both of these tools, incredible for melee to be honest. Though that thousand dragon ward you can pretty much just use as an off shield with for its effect regardless of what style you're on because it's such a, a useful effect in so many scenarios. Had to get that one in. Personally, I'm a bit thrown for a loop because I'm not that excited about... I didn't want to do Desert again anyway because I did Desert last year, so I kind of have to discount Desert. Which leaves my raid regions as Zaya or the Gloves of the Damned. I don't know how interested I am in this. I'm sure it's very good, but it's not my sort of playstyle. And this just doesn't pair well with the Crystal Blessing, which I'm super attracted to. So I'm completely thrown for a loop. I don't know what I'm going to do for my region choices as it stands, but I'm sure my own video will help me figure that out when I go and make it after this one. Like I say, I've got that huge area picking guide coming on the way. I'll be working on that by the time you're watching this one. So definitely stay tuned for that. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit the like button too. It helps out a ton. And look after yourselves. Be lovely to one another. I'll see you on the next one.